third part of the metaphysical trilogy. And uh, to be absolutely honest, I hadn't realized that the quantum enigma and the holographic principle are the first two parts of a supposed trilogy. I mean, is there a storyline that connects all the three albums? Uh, well, when it comes to the Kingdom of Heaven, also a trilogy that's trying to find out the true meaning of life, I guess, that mm -hmm. science and spirituality have to come together uh, to yeah to find out what the true meaning of life is and omega the omega or omega stands for the omega point and that's basically the end point in the evolution process mm -hmm. you know the big bang is the the origin of everything and the, the omega point is so to speak uh, that everything is spiraling towards the final point of divine unification and mm -hmm. that was uh, Mark's idea and he had the idea of naming the uh, album the Omega Point but then we all decided Omega is nicer we start the album the intro with Alpha and we end with Omega just to give it a full circle uh, moment I guess mm -hmm. and um, it's a very spiritual album but we also write about global warming, about genome editing, so it's it's again a mixture. But a big theme on this album is also the inner yin-yang that we have, the mm -hmm. balance between light and dark, and um, for, yeah, trying to find the true meaning of life, navigating through our own inner labyrinth. Mm -hmm. And that's what you see in the artwork as well, you see the woman who has like a labyrinth. Yeah below her and you see another little person trying to find its way through the labyrinth and life has ups and downs sometimes we get lost and um, our goal is to you know be free out, come out of this labyrinth and be like spiritually enlightened the pandemic changed your recording plans uh, you did the vocals in a local uh, studio uh, and yeah. uh, uh, did, did, did you at some time consider of postponing the whole procedure in order to go to your professional studio and uh, do your thing? Um, no, actually not. I mean, no. yeah, in the beginning, when uh, middle of March, that was when the, we had the lockdown and when Mark and I had to record the vocals. Uh, we thought, okay, let's look for solutions. Maybe I can record from home. Mm -hmm. But the problem was that our son um, didn't have any school so we had to take care of him as well and my husband also had to go to work so uh, we then went I searched for a studio nearby and recorded in the morning and then I got back home then my husband could go to work that's how we did it and Mark stayed in Sicily and recorded his vocals uh, in his home studio and Yos was there via Zoom um, I could hear him on my headphones we could communicate and uh, that's how we did it and it was the first time for me to go to my job in the morning and come back home the same yeah. day. That is very rare for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, the album lasts uh, 70 uh, glorious uh, minutes and uh, in the typical uh, epica way it's full of information. I mean, the music is fantastic, is epic, is dramatic, is uh, cinematic, there are brutal things, there are melodic uh, things, there are oriental uh, things, there are the choirs, there's the, the orchestra, um, all these things. Uh, apart from the musical uh, point, also lyrical, uh, things for Epica are always very, very, very deep. I mean, your albums, the things you do, are very, very uh, demanding for the listener. Uh, at the same time, we live in the era of the short span attention. Uh, so your music demands a lot of effort from the fan in order to get in and to absorb everything. So the question is, did you ever consider of simplify the things a little bit in order to make it more accessible? Yeah, for this album, the writing process, we were thinking about writing songs that are also good life songs. Mm -hmm. And that means that you have to have, of course, catchy melodies. We have a couple of shorter songs, which mm -hmm. we would call like the festival songs uh, that can, uh, like you say, grasp the attention of a larger group of people, which I know everybody is like, we are consuming faster than our brain can process yeah. all the things that we see. 
But the thing is with music, uh, it's different than visual things I find. And um, I think we succeeded in trying to pull the uh, audience into the music because it really is like a like a, uh, a journey when you listen to the music, especially songs like Kingdom of Heaven. It's 30 minutes long, but if when I listen to it, I don't feel that it's 30 minutes long. And songs like um, Code of Life, they they are not super short, but they feel shorter because they have a little bit more the the catchy melodies um, without us using like a success form form uh, how do you say formula mm -hmm. the skeleton key is also it's a very doomy song but the chorus is super catchy and it just pulls you in I guess we did a, a good job at trying you know keeping the album interesting that's also something we think about when we come up with the track listing mm -hmm. of course we have the intro um, Alpha and the end, Omega, and then we had a Kingdom of Heaven placed as song number eight, yeah. which has a double meaning because mm -hmm. this is our eighth album, yeah. and we also have this uh, cipher eight on the uh, on the artwork. Mm -hmm. But eight is also the infinity symbol if you flick it to the side, right. which is connected to the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we we had the intro, we had Kingdom of Heaven on number eight, and then we had the last twelve. Uh, Omega, and then we look, okay, which songs do we start with? Of course, Abyss of Time was connected to the intro. And then we all vote for an order of the songs that we think is a nice, has a nice flow to it. Uh, not everybody, you know, we are six people, and then Yos, our producer as well, we get to choose, we get to make a list. And uh, I think we came up with a good, good track listing, mm -hmm. you know, to make people want to listen to it from the beginning to the end. Yeah. And what do you think, even if the vaccine will be out? Even if we achieve the so-called herd immunity, do you think that things will be the same as it was two years ago? I don't know. I think uh, this might be a good, good time for people to realize what we can do to improve our future, to safeguard our future, because it's not just the not just the pandemic, it's also global warming and the younger generation is becoming more conscious, more aware of what's going on. So that's also something I worry about, not just the pandemic. The pandemic is a side effect of it, basically. That it's just <laughs> too many people and everybody is just doing whatever they want without thinking of the effect of it. Mm -hmm. For concerts, when they start going, I don't know if it's going to be like huge events they might start with smaller groups i think that the festival would be a great way to get started because it will be open air we won't be in closed uh, rooms or they, they shouldn't do it in uh, or even if it's intense it's more ventilated so i don't see myself doing shows where people are sitting in a car and i've seen the bubbles you know those mm -hmm, big yeah, know. walls mm -hmm. but what if you have to go to the bathroom <laughs> what if you want to drink a beer? Yeah. I mean, they should build them with a toilet in it. And if you have to go to the toilet, you push a button and it goes black. You can do your thing and then... But that's, they're not that high tech. They're just big, uh, how do you say, beach balls. Mm -hmm. So um, then you cannot do pyrotechnics because then they will melt. And <laughs> so I, I will uh, uh, just have to wait and see. Okay. So, uh, Simon, before I let you go, I need your message to the Greek fans. You know, you're very popular here in Greece. So just say something to the people who watch the TV show. Hello, everybody. This is Simon from Epica. We have a new album, Omega, which is coming out February 26th. We hope that you like it and hope that you enjoy Metal Hammer TV.